Hello and welcome to Stranger of Sword City. This is a grid-based dungeon crawler made in Japan with turn-based combat. And uh, I'll probably let this episode run a little longer than normal, because being a Japanese RPG, I definitely expect about 20 minutes of explaining mechanics. And not to mention character creation. Let's get in there. You are prodded by a dull pain and start to regain consciousness. You finally open your eyes and see ruins drowned by sand. Noise and the force of impact still echo through your head. There must have been a crash. Your body hurts, but miraculously, you aren't fatally wounded. When you realize you're safe, your attention turns to the cold. You search for something warm to wear, and you find an old box. You don't even care about the mold. You wrap the cloth around yourself. It's not a good look, but you don't have time to care. Please select your game difficulty. Normal. Surely I, can, surely I don't have to be on beginner, right? <laughs> I hope. So here's one of the little quirks in this game, is that... It came out at one point, I believe, in, in I think it was Japan exclusive actually at, at first, and then they re-released it again. And as a weird quirk along the way, they made a second art style. So there's this very, 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 very anime-looking art style here, where everyone's got glowing r gems as eyeballs and rel relatively plain faces, and everyone's kind of standing in the same sort of pose. And then there's the other art style, which I think is the original one that they had before that. Like, here's the anime, and there's the original, which is much more sort of dark fantasy, hand-painted visual sort of thing. And I think people are used to the idea that this is probably my preference. Although it's, there's definitely a, definitely a little... almost an inconsistency sometimes between, like, this looks like, like, this looks like it's almost done by different artists than this one. Like, this one has weird glowing effects, and the, the line work looks kind of weak. Like, not, not weak as in, like, bad, but as in weak as in, like, the line work kind of fades into the background in the painting, where this one has, like, really defined outlines. So even even from that point of view, I think there's even still multiple artists within a specific art style, which makes things even more confusing. So we continue through all these of this other art style, until we suddenly transition right back into, boom, super anime portraits again. Look at all these anime characters. These in particular are all just identical stances. Maybe they're from a... They must- they might represent some specific section of people that are very stoic and identical. Although we're all- we're all crashed plane survivors, so maybe that's not the case. 
So to give context here, we were in a plane crash. And now we're in a fantasy world. I'm sure we'll learn more as we go on. But yeah, between, given the, between these two, uh, I think I'm gonna go with the, uh, the more ha the more painted looking art styles, because I like these as, as portraits. And we're gonna be looking at these for the entire game. Well, this guy looks like a nice leader character, because we're kind of making the leader of the party and we're gonna be recruiting people as we go along. This, uh, this fits what I, the image I kind of think of. That said, uh, I might come back to the portrait screen, because as we continue forward, I'm gonna actually make the character itself now, and I might find a reason to change what their appearance is once I realize what class I actually want to play as. Maximum life points and minimum bonus points will change according to age. This affects revive and recover time. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry, I was trying to I was trying to press A to go out of that menu, but it was still going on. So the older I get, the fewer life points I have, all the way down to one. But the, the bonus point multiplier changes, so like right now the minimum bonus points is 10. So I'll have, the, the, high, the older your character is, the better your stats are, basically. But the fewer life points you have. Admittedly, it would be nice if they explained what those things mean before they ask you to make this decision. <laughs> Alright, so I've done a little reading to figure out how to handle this situation. And apparently the main character is going to be restricted to a talent called Chosen One. And Chosen One restricts you to... Uh, it's, it's part of the main story, like how you can do the main thing that's going to be happening throughout the game that pushes the story forward. But it's also going to result in effect where I can't lose life points. So unless I'm missing something, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't want to be old, honestly. Seems like a good idea. So if I play a 60-year-old, and I look like an elf, so we can pretend that that's because I'm an elf or something, an immortal. I don't know why they're... I don't know if this plane crashed from a world that had elves or something. But, uh, as far as I can tell, I can't lose life points, so having life points of 1 seems fine. And a bonus point of 10 would mean that I'd have much better stats to start off. And I don't see a reason why not to, yet. Maybe we'll learn the hard way not to do that, though. So, elves specialize in intelligence and agility. Humans are nines across the board. Dwarves are good at strength and vitality. A Migmi and Nay. Uh, oops. There was something that looked like a tiny little gnome person, and there was another one that looked like a, a uh, cat person. So, one of those is probably each. Let's see. Migmi has no strength and vitality, while Nay has a decent amount. So, I'm guessing the Nay are the cat people, because they have 13 agility and stuff like that. Whereas the Migmis do not. As somebody who. I might play some kind of ranger type character if that even exists in the game, so being an agility vitality character might be a good idea. So maybe I do want to play a Nay. There's a weird there's a there's sort of a disconnect where your portrait doesn't really affect how anything else plays out in this thing. I think I'm gonna go with Nay for that little bit of durability and offensive stats. But I don't think I'm gonna be using spells on this character. I'll hi I'll hi oh never mind, I have to be a human. Never mind. I'm being stupid. <laughs> there's chosen one. Take blood crystals from lineage types, life points will not decrease. So, unless the game's not explaining something to me properly, that does seem to indicate that my uh, life points are relevant for this character. Now we get bonus points. And I can just click on this for a while to re-roll over and over again, which is interesting. Oh, goddamn. I was getting 10, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 10, 11, and then suddenly 15. I guess I'll take that one. <laughs> So we're even across the entire board, but we can apply our bonus points. Is it one at a time? Yeah, it is one at a time. Okay, so let's read what the stats do. Strength increases power of physical attacks. Intelligence increases the effect of magic and MP. Piety increases the effect of light magic and MP. Vitality increases defense and hit points. Agility increases accuracy, evasion, and initiative. So... Makes your turn happen faster, dodge more attacks, hit more often. Specifically, though, I'm noticing it doesn't mention anything about hitting uh, str harder with, like... Or... It, it, there's no hint that there might be agility-based weapons. So uh, we, you may still need to focus on strength if you want to deal damage. And luck affects many categories. Thanks, game, for explaining that one. I'm gonna put a few points into agility, a few points into strength, a few points into vitality, and let's just... Let's go deep into agility. Let's make an agility-based character a bit, huh? And I'll just even the other ones out a bit. 
So we put I put four points into strength, four points into vitality, seven points into agility. We'll see how that turns out. I'm interested in seeing like it, am I going to have such a high dodge that people just constantly miss me? Because that's definitely what I would like to see. Also, I'm forced to be human because apparently everyone has to be the human chosen one. Makes sense because you're a, a plane crash victim. But uh, I like the portrait, so I think I'm just going to keep it anyway. They let you pick them. In fact, I would say that like. 80% of the portraits available, maybe like half the portraits available, don't fit the race that you have to play as. And now we pick our character. Fighter, a true soldier that specializes in close combat, heavily armed. Knight, mainly stays in the front row to protect allies, heavily armored. Samurai, front row speedy killer, uses one-hit kill swords. Wizard, magician that ma specializes in offensive and support magic. Cleric. A healer. If equipped with blunt weapons, it fights for mid-range. Ranger. A mid-range attack class with attacks with a bow. Weak but agile. I might go for ranger. It fits perfectly with what I'm looking at here. Ninja. A class for advanced players. It can perform various roles. Thanks for being... That is the most unhelpful thing. <laughs> I guess if you're an advanced player, you already know what a ninja is. So it's like... No, but no one talk about Fight Club situation. Dancer. Trickster that specializes in singing and dancing. Uses throne, so you throw items around. I'm, that sounds like fun, but I think I'd rather hire, like, get a new character than actually have them be my protagonist because I'm a little worried I might feel trapped. Let's go with Ranger. It was meant to be, right? So now we're a human Ranger. What is this? Oh, their voices. <laughs> Oh yeah, we could be here for a while. <laughs> Pretty straightforward attack uh, sounds I went with. By the way, of course the pink meter is the uh, female voices. But I uh, went with attack 18. Damage. And then death sound. Seems good for me. I'm happy with them. They are all over the place, by the way. I landed on the name Guy Love Bridge with the nickname Strider. I, 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 the moment that popped into my head, I couldn't escape it. I couldn't think. I can't think of any other names now. It's just that's his name now. It's he's stuck with it forever. It's his permanent name. I can't. It literally like it's it's cemented in there now. <laughs> it just fits for some reason. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is my character build. We'll see if I've made 15 mistakes already or not. How long has it been? Strider roams around the sandy ruin, alone. But then, you notice something echoing behind you. Oh! Oh! <laughs> you turn around and see an elderly man that you don't recognize. The Elder is scared, as if he is staring at a beast. Who are you? Sulatobu 
Elder disappeared. Alright, so this will be an experiment, because this game does not have localized English dubbing. It's all Japanese. So, some of you always complain when I use English dubbing when the Japanese is an option, so here you're gonna get your wish, I suppose. I don't really want to talk over the Japanese dubbing with, with my own narration, so hopefully people are willing to read along. Uh, this is a test of the thing that people always say to do, so we'll see if you guys were right, or if it's just like three of you who are crazy and everyone else is gonna be mad now. <laughs> Display the help dialogue with start. You can use ESC help control, return to title, yeah. Help dialogue can be open during battle almost any other time. Just talking about the pause screen, basically. So, here we have full-on tile-based dungeon crawling with an auto map in the corner. Which is always welcome. One little peeve already is that I do wish that the auto map would automatically add squares to your map as you face them. Because it, it slightly bothers me that I'm facing these and nothing's showing up there. But it happens. Different games work differently. So I'm surrounded by holes right now, and that's easy to be... to make a joke out of, of course. Looks like I can hit X. There's like wait. Oh! Never mind. X is a different menu. There we go. So X is a, the map. And I can scroll around here manually to inspect different elements, or I can switch floors. But we lack floors to go to. That's X. Y brings up this party menu, including options. So start is how you bring up start is how you bring up how the all the stuff about uh, tutorials and stuff. But Y is how you bring up the party stuff, such as the party members and their stats and things like that. Right trigger, a left trigger seems to be equipment. Look at that. So we're starting off with a war sling. That doesn't sound like a bow. That sounds like a like a like well like a sling. I'm already starting off on the wrong foot here. Level one ranger. Guy love bridge. All right. Then finally we have A for interacting, investigating. Nothing special happened because I was standing in the middle of nowhere. All right. Nice little visual so far. Oh. Surprised? This is a dark road. Your sight won't help you. But no need to worry. Just keep moving. I just walked through the door. Alright, that's slightly off-putting, but I'll, I'll accept it for now. Here we go. It's very dark around here. Alright. Let's try to outline the map. So it looks like you can only see one tile in every direction right now. So if you want to fill in the map, you have to do it manually. Don't see any special details yet. Got a branching path. I'll move forward a little bit in both directions just to... M oh, that's a dead end. But yeah, when I, when I see branching paths, I'll move forward one square down one path, then return to go down the other path. Just so that I can physically map, as you see right here, a little end point there. That'll be my strategy for mapping in this mapping system, is that I can add a little dead end there so I can tell which one, where there was a divergence and where there wasn't. Because the little dot line isn't quite enough, because it could have been a cliff. There's a door here. Alright. We'll backtrack a bit. Another door. We're at two doors now. No reason to think one or the other one's the right way. Oh, we're in the light. That could be important. Just filling in the map real quick. Doors all around. Okay, well this one might lead to the other door. So we'll see if it fills in the map. It looks like it will. But the floor has holes. Oh, the two sides are inaccessible. The other, the other path was actually a dead end, it would appear. Hello. That looks awfully important, so I'm gonna go back to that in a moment. What's down here, then? Another dead end? That's exactly what's down here. Good to know. Alright, we're being thorough so far. Map's more or less filled in. I could run all the way around to fill in that piece of map back there, but it seems if it's a dead end, there's not much reason to go right here. Unless this game has invisible items hanging out in it. So what are you? Oh, two weird things. An armored corpse lies there. This must be- this might be useful. There is a full bag of items. Three potions. Alright. All- it's his loss, right? So, we can go through iron doors, but wooden gates, those, those are impassable. If I investigate, there is a door closed by a device. So something has to open it. Probably that gear over there, if I were to guess. 
since that's usually how they use that kind of information. This must take me upstairs. A piercing breeze blows through, leaving clouds of dust. In the distance, under the starry sky, machines rust like skeletons. あつめられた力は爪跡を残し。こうして世界に入った風穴として違法に通じているのでございます。最も悪いことばかりではございません。こうして。色々なものが降ってくれば貧しい者たちには恵みとなりますし。こうやってお前を見つけられたんじゃからの。as the elder raises his voice, the snake monster appears. Oh, uh, it appeared. Okay, I thought the snake. I thought the elder literally turned into a snake monster. <laughs> um. Okay. We're off to a hell of a start here. <laughs> Suddenly, a giant wyvern appears. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You're insane. <laughs> I don't know what it is about NIS games, but they have the worst audio balancing. They always have these voice actors who talk in really low tones and mumble while the loudest music in the history of video games plays. I actually lowered all of the audio for everything except for the voice acting. The voice acting is the loudest meter, and it still has that problem, just like this guy, eh? Without warning, a triumphant voice comes from behind the old man. The giant wyvern's neck makes a wet slicing sound and splits. The girl who slew the wyvern yells to Strider, drenched in blood. There we go. She, knows, she at least knows how to speak up. Enemy encountered. Alright, let's learn how fights work in this game. Alright, so... Fight, I think. Do I even have skills? Chivalric Sword. Oh, I'm playing as her right now, that's why she has abilities. Oh, she, <laughs> she has 250 hit points while I have 30. Yeah, I'm guessing she's more powerful than I am. She can attack an enemy in each row, halves users' defense and creatures. Uh, there's no multiple enemies as far as I can tell. Taunt enemies and increase a void, higher rate with the same when in the same row. Iron defense is probably a good idea. If I use it to taunt the opponent, then they're more likely to attack that character instead of my much weaker and more vulnerable character who has no abilities. And could just fight. Oh, it is a multi-part enemy. The Babidra A and Babidra B, and the Hydra and the uh, Tuck. Whoa, the Hydra is lower level than the Babidras. Interesting. Oh, look at that. Look, I just realized the character design here. It's a big, gross, pus-covered, infected tumor monster, much like a Tremor from Tremors. The the the, the uh, what are the what are the ground the graboids are called? Yeah. Uh, but it's coming out of a broken car, and these two guys, the Babadras, they're both coming out of TVs. So, and in addition to all the background being full of mechanical parts in this fantasy world, this place is too. Because this is apparently a portal that links the main world to this one, or I mean, our, my world to this one, so there's just debris and nonsense going everywhere. Maybe I'll try to attack one of the smaller ones to reduce the number of opponents? Uh, yeah, supply action. Ryu took an iron defense stance in front of the party. 
Strider attacked by Bajir with War Sling. They dodged the attack. I did it! They, uh, Babadra A is attacking, but Ryu protected Strider. That's a good start. Ryu dodged the attack. Protected me while avoiding the attack itself. Hydra's defending. Oh. Ryu, so we both dodged both attacks. Okay. Let's both try teaming up on one uh, character and see what happens. All fast to fly. Did we, oh. Okay, never mind. Let's, let's read the log to see what happened there. That was a little too much there. Uh, Strider attacked. We hit them for 31 damage. Ryu attacked with two hits for 85 damage. Hydra's resting, not moving at all. Babadra attacked, but dodged. Okay, both of them attacked me and dodged. I don't really see why they're in the back, though. That's not clear. They must have changed rows. That was the main thing I was trying to inspect there. I'm concerned about the Hydra, because I feel like it's going to use a skill. So I'm going to use Iron Defense. Attack the Hydra. Reuse Juice's Defense. We attack the Worsling. Yeah, Hydra takes 24 damage. Hydra's attacking with his tail, but we dodged. Alright, we both... Wow, look at these dodges. Alright, we seem to be relatively good at avoiding attacks, assuming this isn't like the game being like, you win automatically, because it's the beginning of the game. Which is totally possible. Let's go on the offensive, though. 27 damage, 62 damage for two hits. We're dodging still. Alright. I genuinely don't know if the game's just letting me dodge everything because it's the beginning of the game, or if it's, uh... Or if I'm genuinely that good. Let's go ahead and fast apply. Oh, no, we took one damage, but on the character that's pretty okay with that. And the Hydra's taking more damage. I'm down. Well, shit. <laughs> that went bad fast. Uh, Strider receives 31 damage. Ryu dodged. Strider received 14 damage and ran out of energy. Okay. So yes, we do eventually take hits and can't defend ourselves. Well, it's all down to her, but she seems to be rather impervious, so I'm not that concerned. Yeah. In fact, she killed both of them already. Nope, nope, not yet. I think she's just supposed to obliterate this guy, basically. Yep, she's taking minimal damage. There we go. So I guess it must have been... It might have been almost inevitable for me to die eventually. With those kinds of dice rolls and the amount of health and damage everybody had, except for me. <laughs> Got four helmets. That's... Homogenous. What <laughs> その so this girl is apparently called a vessel. The elder's voice fades away somewhere beyond the dust cloud. The girl with the sword kneels down beside Strider and presses a shining feather right against the chest. Oh, yep, yeah, there's even dialogue for it. Probably was uh, scripted. Strider regained consciousness. Thank you. Thank You introduce yourself. Who was that? 
ここではいろいろなことが起きるの本当に向こうでは想像もしなかった不思議なことがいろいろと出口は西にある行きましょう Alright, so I am quite injured at the moment, but she seems to indicate that we're on our way to an exit, so I don't know if I need to heal manually or not. I might just be safe to、uh, continue forward. And it looks like we'll be arriving at a place called the Strangers Guild, which must consist entirely of people who are,、uh, people who are strangers, meaning people who are from the, what we'll call it the human world, for lack of a better term, and found their way into here. That appears to be a monster. The exit is to the west. We should leave for now. So we have to. So that's the south. There seems to be a monster in that direction, judging by that icon there. But over here is going to be the actual location of the Stranger's Guild. Do you want to take this? Three potions. Look out for yourself. Oh. See? Here's some coming this way. This will be good practice. If you're ready, give it a shot. <laughs> Fat little rat creatures. Enemy encountered. The little guts hanging out. Alright. Let's go ahead and defend. Oh, wait. Not defend. Skill. Iron defense. Because my character needs to heal himself. Apparently, we are going to continue. Whoa. Calm down, game. Okay, it apparently thinks I'm pulling a, a trigger all the time. That's unfortunate. <laughs> oh no. Alright, we'll just have to see if I can stop on just the right spot. I'll try to fix this for next time, hopefully. There we go. Clicked on it. What a weird nightmare. Alright. She's defending. I heal with a potion. 14 hit points. That's less than half. Alright, they're not the strongest ways of healing. I've been protected by Ryu. And she dodged both attacks. Alright. Let's ruin some people. Down to pretty much a particle now, so I'll have her attack the second character, I'll attack the weaker one. 37 damage, wow, yep. Current weapon's effective. Oh, we took, we actually deal comparable damage apparently. That's a bit of a surprise. 40. 73, alright. I might not use fast apply very often. I've used it a few times now, and I don't really like the feel of it, particularly the fact that it just kind of skips the turn and doesn't really give, like, I don't think it even shows numbers to indicate what's going on. So it's more than just fast forwarding through dialogue, it's actually just like, oh, what happened? You did good out there. Do you know martial arts? I'm actually a pro. Just sports. <laughs> uh, let's just say just sports. I see. Your athleticism comes in handy. But don't worry if you're not that athletic. In this world, we strangers are far stronger than others. Stronger? Yes. Anyone would notice it. Gravity isn't as strong here. You can carry heavy weight, no problem. You're looking at a good example. I can use this sword easily, and I don't get exhausted quickly. I was into archery in high school. But that doesn't mean just any high school girl can fight. Strangers are stronger here. Didn't you see it for yourself? So have some confidence. That's the most important thing. Oh, yeah, and take this Stranger's badge. It's not much, but it's a charm that can heal your wounds. It'll come in handy, so please keep it close. Alright, so we can change our equipment with a、uh, left trigger. Now, let's get ready and head out. The city isn't too far from here. So, hopefully, I can get through here without it freaking out. Alright, this is mapped to bumpers instead of triggers, so I can navigate it without the game freaking out. <laughs> hopefully, I'll, hopefully, I can fix that soon. Otherwise, I might have to go to keyboard controls or something. Stranger's Badge. Charm、uh, given to those who are affiliated with the guild, which is presumably an entire guild that makes up, that's made up of people who all have been stranded here one by one. Gives me five points of IDDL, one point of hit point, three points of luck. I don't know what IDDL is. Well, ID is probably identification, but I don't know what DL would be. 
it looks like an unlocking icon, but I don't know what DL would go together to mean to mean like lock picking or anything. Go ahead and equip that. I, I'm not wearing any underwear. <laughs> the commando bow user. Okay, fine. Right. Let's keep filling in our map. Nothing over. Oh, there is something over here actually. That might be the way to go forward though, unless I'm supposed to go here and now. Oh. That's the sound you make when you hit walls in this game, apparently. Everyone just smacks into it. So that's a... that's a subway car. Just sticking straight out of the ground. What kind of impact did it make? There's the uh, plane in the distance, which I think I was supposed to be in a plane crash. And I don't see any other ones around, so... That might presumably mean it's mine? Oh, weird. When I rotate, the background doesn't fit the foreground. So the plane's right in front of me over here, and right in front of me over here when I rotate by 90 degrees. That's a little freaky. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. It happens. There's another monster over there I saw in the distance I'm gonna try to avoid for now. Must fill in map. Can't help it. That's probably the entrance to the Strangers Guild right there. You can see a road covered in sand spanning to the horizon. This is the edge of the ruins. <laughs> Is it strong? Lineage appeared. We're gonna learn what lineages are, apparently. Enemy encountered. It's a whole group of them, but the big lineage guy is in the front. It's Mamura, and the enemies behind it are not targetable because they must be in the back row. Interesting. That's something for us to learn about, too, is how rows work. I assume I can also rearrange my character's roles in the party over time. Alright, let's just... let's get our attack off. 64 damage. 25. I'm helping! Popcorn B's not moving. Oop, I'm, at, I'm being attacked. 35 damage. Just like that, huh? Alright, fine. That seems to be the pattern right now for us. The Ryu tends to not get hit at all. All the more reason to level up and get a proper party of characters, huh? Oh, he's, they're summoning more people. Seems to be all the more reason to remove this character as fast as possible. The entire back row of people's hesitating and defending right now. I'm still taking chunks out of this character, uh, and they're relatively ineffective against me. She must have been here for a while if she's this powerful. Nope. Mostly people are sitting around. Not sure what to expect of that back row of people. Are they all going to do something when I defeat Mamura? There's five of them. Oh, there's four of them back there. That could be bad. Alright, it's starting to take a long time now. Just kind of... Mamura hardened their body. 37 damage. 68. Oh, there we go. Out of energy. But now I have to worry about these guys. So as we were taking them down, all of these characters showed up, and that could be a problem for us. Do I have other skills to use? Attack an, uh, an enemy in each row. Oh, an enemy in each row. But are you, it lowers my defense, that's probably not a good idea anyway. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and fight. Hopworm. 69 damage, not enough to kill it. Might be here for a while. A lot of incoming attacks. 73? Not enough to kill it still. Alright. Might be some rapid fire button pressing going on here for a bit. <laughs> Cause I think I'm just, I don't really have any any skills or decisions to make right now, so I'm mostly just hitting A a lot. Oh, there, there are- wow, there's a lot of them. Wait, they're coming in faster. Hang on a second. Is there a dialogue about them showing up? Oh yeah, they're calling an ally. Hopworm F. There's a lot of them now. Okay. We're all the way up to- we're all the way to G. <laughs> Alright. I don't see anything to do besides just keep attacking at this point. So I'm just gonna keep attacking. And hope they die before I do. Yeah, there we go. They're dying before I am. But there are so many new people. Maybe I'll get a lot of experience, although I might not get any experience for my defeated character. This would definitely be going faster if I hadn't been one-shot. <laughs> 
Holy cow. A lot of these guys. Their tongues are worms. Like earthworm tongues. Strange sight. Alright, 51 blood gems and 2,000 experience. What a strange little encounter. When Ryu kneels beside Strider, she presses a shining bright feather into your chest. Like a phoenix down? Strider regains consciousness. The monster's body vanishes. Then a bright light emerges and a fragment of a crystal remains. Ryu stops speaking, then raises her face to look at Strider. Will it hurt? Strider carefully reaches for the blood crystal. Then suddenly... It settles into your hands as if it were sucked in. Special powers? No way. I like to imagine that I actually speak English and she actually speaks Japanese and we just conveniently understand each other but only speak our given languages and that's why the back and forth works that way. We can identify items and cleanse them, okay? A dented pot? What a helmet. Broken dagger, short sword. Hey, short sword plus two. That's a real weapon. And two le plus two le uh, leather helms. Dented pot. Yep, it's an NIS game if they're using pots as equipment. That's adorable. Do I click on them? Nope, we just move straight through. Okay. We've made our way to the stranger base. Ooh. Each little, what, each little tab on the screen has its own background, apparently. It does look like it's all... Oh, yeah, it's all little different pieces of one painting. So the stranger base is in the middle, palaces on the left, slums are on the right, lower divisions on the bottom, upper divisions on the top. So we're looking at different different perspectives of one painting, most made, made most obvious by the stranger base, palace, and slums combo, where you can see the stranger base on the screen still. Okay, interesting. No map options here. Just taking a quick look around. I'm not really sure if I was gaining experience from that stuff or not. Or if I was losing them when I died. So is there a listing of experience on here is what I'm curious about. Equipment? No. Mastery. Profile. I see no listing of current experience on the screen, unless I'm crazy. So I don't actually know if I was getting... If I missed out on all that experience for dying or not. We'll see. Let's go visit the stranger base. Mwah! <laughs> I'm gonna go to the Strangers Guild, Mo Metal, or return. <laughs> どうしたの
鉄の病で見つけたのなるほどそれで急にだったら多少の無茶を責められないなはじめまして僕はこれ光つきここでは本名なんて無意味だけどまあ一応礼儀としてね困ったことがあったら何でも僕に言ってくださいこれでもこっちじゃ少しは名の知れた違法人なんですからふん初対面の人には丁寧なのね僕はいつだって丁寧ですよ相手が非常識じゃない限り私ってそんなに常識ないさあ場合によるけどそうださっきアンナも探してましたよそれはちょうどよかった今日あとで教練をお願いするから用意をしておいてね了解じゃあまた後ほど He says there's no reason to use our names around here. I kind of wonder why. If, we're, if we are all from the same world, which maybe that part's not true,、uh, why, why, would, why would the use of names disappear? I don't see the purpose for that. Guided by Ryu, Strider walks to a, on a tour of the fortress. They reach a starlit garden and exit into a hall surrounding it. This is the guild's main chamber, corridor. This is connected to the base, shop, and leader's room. I'll leave out the explanations, just remember that part. Oh, yeah. oh it's Miss Subleader. When did you get back? Just then, someone spots for you and calls to her. I'm home, Miss Guruba. Sheesh. Where, are, where were you? You ran off, and it was just chaos around here. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, something came up. Oh, now we're doing voice acting. Make up your mind. Anayana! <laughs> あたしらミグミに会うのは初めてえっとミグミっていうのはグルルバさんたちの種族のことよ私たちと違う先祖を持つ人たちなのこの町には色んな種族が住んでるのよあたしらミグミに猫みたいなね耳の尖った色二たち